In my last tutorial, I walked through the process of adding one object to another, connecting them using a shrink wrap modifier and then the data transfer modifier. And a couple of people commented and said, hey, wouldn't it be easier just to have manually connected the two using just traditional polygon modeling? That's debatable. My goal for showing those methods was to say, hey, there are alternate possibilities for doing things that you may be able to apply to different situations. But since some folks did bring that up, let's go ahead and connect the two using a traditional polygon modeling approach. I should make a quick note that I am recording this in Blender's light theme because the polygons and the profiles and everything just show up better since we're going to be focusing on that. So the first thing that we want to do is take note of the fact that I already have a profile that I want and have established for the handle that we will use. And I've also established about the profile shape of the handle that I want. There are a couple of ways that we could do this, but I'm going to go ahead and establish a connection between the two by trying to look at the polygon structure of the tumbler itself and matching them up to the boundary of the handle profile. I also know that I'm going to want to have a few divisions of this handle profile. So what I'm going to do is let's look at this in the front view and we're going to back out and we're just going to see that you see it gently tapers down to the side and we want to sort of consider the resolution of that tumbler body. If we weren't going to be having a handle connect to it, then we would need fewer lines going around it to define the curvature. But because we are going to be attaching geometry, it's critical that we establish proper resolution. If we try and connect this profile in the middle of polygons, it can tend to cause a warping of the subdivision surface that will produce artifacts that we don't want. So the first thing that we need to do is adjust this. Since this is already a polygon structure that's established, we need to come into polygon edit mode and you can see I, I already have this primary loop selected and I just double clicked it and it goes all the way around to the center points. So we need to extract this by pressing shift and D the escape key and then press P to separate this to a selection. Let's come in and turn off the original geometry. I'm going to remove the subdivision modifier, press the period key and let's return the pivot to the object's origin. Come back over to the modifier and let's put a screw modifier on there. And there we can see that it's already generated this lathe object. So here is where we're going to be able to come in and adjust this in order to match generally the size of the profile of the handle that I want. Down here in the screw modifier, let's go ahead and start adjusting the resolution. If we double it up to 32, we can begin to see what we need to do. Let's double it again to 64. Knowing that what I need to do is match this so that we can see generally a division of four within my profile here. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to take this up to 80. And I think that actually works. That's close enough. If we add four more, it's just going to go on the other side. And I think a value of 80 is close enough to my profile. Let's go ahead and apply this, come into edit mode. I've already got a couple of loops in here that were remaining from the previous construction method. So I'm going to repurpose these, double clicking that GG, and we're going to pull this up until we match my profile. Let's do the same thing here. Slide that down. I'm going to remove this because I don't think it's quite in the middle. Command R, add that, and then let's this is the boundary for the metal top there. So I want to retain that command R and I'm going to put one more division there. That's about equal to what we have currently click and let's do the same thing here. Command R once, which is a halfway division. I'll add one more here. So that's the resolution that we basically need. GG, bring that up just a little bit for the construction processes that we need. Let's come in and I'm going to just select those polygons right there because those will basically match the profile that I have. In fact, let's come over. I've got that plane right there. I'm just going to turn that off. Press Shift and D to duplicate these. Escape 
pull these out and then press the period key to remove those to become their own object. Leave edit mode. And then with this duplicate geometry, let's come in and flatten this out. A key, S, Y, and zero and return. We need this to become a profile that we can use with a curve. So let's come in and select all of these interior edges, press the X key, and we're going to remove those edges. And we're left with simply the perimeter, but we want to make sure that we have these vertices left in place. Tab key, bring up the context menu, and we're going to convert this directly into a curve. And then we're going to do the same thing here with this profile. Let's make sure that this is converted to a curve because it was extracted as a polygon mesh component. We want to extrude this profile along the path of the handle. We need to make sure that we come and do a set origin to geometry for that to work correctly. Let's come back over to the profile for the handle and down here in the data properties for it, scroll down to where we see geometry and then down to object. Let's go ahead and select that profile and it extrudes long, but not quite right. So what we need to do is come back over here to our profile tab to go into edit mode. It expects the geometry to be basically facing perpendicular to the Z axis. So tap the R key X and then 90. And then that will get that rotated around to the correct orientation. Let's go ahead now and leave edit mode. Let's convert the handle now explicitly over to a polygon mesh. And we don't need this profile anymore. So we'll remove that. Let's go ahead and select both the body and the handle. In fact, I'm going to hold the shift key and reselect the body because that's going to be the target object that this gets merged into. And we'll join those into the unified mesh. Tab key takes us into edit mode. And we want to be in face so that we can come over here and just select these polygons that match this geometry. X key deletes them. In edge mode, we double click these open boundaries right there. And then we will just bridge the edge loops together. And then finally, let's come over here and do a cleanup dissolve. So there we have these two merged. It's very important at this point that we come over and check the facing direction. So if we come over here to our show overlays, let's turn on face and we can see that we have some mismatching here. So let's come over, select everything under mesh and do normals, recalculate outside to correct that. That's really important. Go ahead and turn that off. So it looks like I goofed. Let's come back over here into edge mode. I added one extra loop up here that I don't need. Let's come down to the bottom. We need to produce a boundary down here. Command R, click, hold and drag and put that right about there. Now at this point we could actually apply a subdivision surface modifier and it would sort of blend in, but it wouldn't be as controlled as I want it to be. So we're going to double click around this attached perimeter. And let's come over to the bevel tool. We want it to be in a two one configuration and then expand out about like that. But I actually want it to be in a clamped overlap mode because I want it to come up to this established boundary that I've already got set here. Select this GG and pull that up about like that and do the same thing down here. GG and pull that down there. If you've watched any of my other tutorials on modeling, you know that for subdivision surfaces, we want to try and maintain loops. So that's sort of one of the factors in the back of my mind as I do this. I want to round this now and select these four corner loops. And then come, we're still in the bevel tool, and I want it to be in the two configuration, but I want it to go back to the default point five, which is an arc or a rounded corner profile. So then we can just come over, let's be in active tool. So we can just select one of the edges, pull out until we get about like that. So that produces the rounding around here. And then here, here, these four corners, 
these edges. Let's just do a cleanup dissolve. Once we come over and connect here to here, J key, and then we do this all the way around. J, and then here, J, we end up with loops. And you can see that as I double click. So this is one of the reasons why I went with this direction. Let's go ahead now and modify this slightly. I'd like this to blend a little bit better here with the existing loop that we have coming around. So I'm going to select each one of these quickly, press GG, and pull this down. And then finally, the last quadrant up here. We're now ready to add the final bit of detail. We have this 90 degree angle here. Let's come over here and select this. Again, the bevel tool, which is so profoundly useful, the 2.5 configuration is what we want. And we add a final bevel about like that, which is sufficient geometry. I mean, you could certainly come in and add one more if you felt it was useful. I think this is perfect. And there we go. So there is our blend. Let's make sure that shape smooth is enabled. Let's come over and add a subdivision modifier to that. I'm going to actually come into these top and bottom boundary loops, which function to constrain this detail in this area. Press Shift and E, and then the one key, which gives us a mean crease of one, preventing subdivision from passing these boundaries. Leave edit mode. Let's come over and take a look at this. And there we go. Let's do cursor to world origin. And that is another way that we could have blended these together. Now, honestly, is that any faster than the first method that I had done where we used the shrink wrap and then the data transfer? Probably not. It's just a different way of going about it. And the thing is, there would have been multiple ways to have connected these. I showed you one possible set of configurations for the polygons in this particular case. So anyway, I hope you found this to be useful.